Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, today I'd like to share with you some of the radioactive rocks that I have. Radioactive stuff. Um, it's not a subject that I've talked about on the channel here before, so I just kind of do a little bit of an intro into this. A um, couple, of, couple of things. Uh, what's really important when you start collecting radioactive stuff is how you store it, okay? There is certainly a proper way to store the stuff and a proper way of handling the stuff. You want to make sure to never ever ingest anything radioactive. You know, uh, I, I kind of think that trying to put in a disclaimer, it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of disrespectful to the viewer. Like, I shouldn't have to tell you that radioactive things uh, are dangerous, right? That's just, you should know that. Um, that said, I do not want to see any hall monitors down in the comments section because the reality of it is uh, having radioactive rocks in your collection, if you properly store them in a proper place, which we're not even going to get into today, but I just kind of want to show you some of the stuff, you can definitely have these in a very safe way and uh, handling them occasionally it is nowhere near as bad as eating garbage, uh, not getting any exercise, or smoking cigarettes. So, um, and those things uh, are way more detrimental to your long-term health than occasionally handling some, uh, some rocks that are radioactive. So, that said, um, let's, uh, let's talk about some of this stuff up close. So here is my little tiny Geiger counter. Now, this is not a professional unit. Um, it only will measure uh, beta, gamma, and x-rays, no alpha particles, but it mostly gets the job done, and uh, it's, you know, pretty affordable at under $100, and it has a real Geiger-Mueller tube inside it. So, um, for the sake of... Oop, didn't hold it long enough. So, for the sake of this video, um, I'm only going to be doing measurements in counts per minute. Now... Uh, CPM is essentially, well, essentially, uh, CPM is a measurement of the number of ionizing events per minute. Uh, there's other ways that you can measure radioactiveness, um, but we're only going to be doing this, and I'm going to leave this thing on here for a little bit and uh, kind of get a baseline reading before I go get my material. Now, uh, out here, it'll probably be around like 18 to like 20, 23 CPM uh, when you let this thing just kind of settle out. Uh, that's just my your general background radiation. And one thing that's kind of neat about this company, uh, I'll put a link down below, but they actually have a map. You can uh, plug these Geiger counters in to your computer and you can see a map of all the other people out there and see what their radiation levels are, where, where they're at, which is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, you can see we're moving up here. And if you're not familiar with a Geiger counter, as you bring radioactive material close to it, it will start to uh, give that audible click. Uh, it can be a little annoying, but I, I kind of think it's kind of fun, right? Um, so I'm going to go get my material now. So why the piece of cardboard? Um, some of my samples that we're going to be looking at today will be a little on the crumbly side. And this makes for, well, easy cleanup. Let's start with uh, something really small. And, you know, uh, with radioactive material, um, size doesn't really matter. Uh, it doesn't take much. So in this little jar, I have an Americium 241 button, okay? So now that doesn't look like much. That button has about 0.3 micrograms of americium-241 in it. Um, to give you kind of a size comparison, uh, 0.3 micrograms is like like a third. Yeah, it's like a third of a grain of sand. Very, very little. Um, so already uh, my Geiger counter has started to tick up just slightly. We're you know, we're down here at 23 CPM, and I'm going to turn this guy just like that. And you can see so pretty much anything over your kind of ambient radiation, 
you're going to probably want to be a little cautious of, right? Uh, try to get that glare out for you. Um, you know, anything over that, like, oh, 50 or so mark, you're going to want to, well, probably handle it in a very safe manner. This will prob probably uh, cap out around 700 or so. So I get it. You're not really here to uh, watch watch me measure the amount of radiation coming off of a uh, well, a little tiny little tiny button here. So uh, I'm gonna put this back and I'll start grabbing well some uh, some of the other natural materials. I guess it's natural, but you know what I mean. Um, the the rocks. Let's look at the rocks. Okay, so. Um, I live in Northeast Washington State, which means I'm very lucky in that we have so much radioactive material right around where I live. Um, you know, uh, we have tons of uranium mines, different things like that. And we're going to be spending some time at some of these uranium mines come, come summer. I mean, they're generally a little higher in elevation, so they're buried under snow right now. Now, what you're looking at is some ore that has little tiny onatite flakes. Onatite is very, very UV reactive. Let's find a nice little piece in here. There we go, how about that? So this puts off such a small amount of radiation that my $100 Geiger counter won't actually pick it up. So uh, there, there have been some very, very hot uh, specimens coming out of some of the mines that we're going to be visiting and hopefully we will you can see some of it there um hopefully we'll be finding some very toasty onatite this this summer um i plan on doing a fair amount of uh hunting for that stuff so kind of fun just how how uv reactive that is i mean i like it i think that it's always a fun thing to see something glowing like that am i right so uh, next up, we're going to be looking at my carnitite, which is from Wyoming. And uh, this is the stuff that, um, well, it's kind of hot. It's kind of a toasty one. So here is the carnitite. Um, it's, it's uranium ore. Um, you can kind of see the, the yellow on it. Let's bring the Geiger counter over. Uh, if you know, you can see how quickly this wants to jump up. Um, these are probably going to land around 3,500 CPM or so. So, uh, quite quite radioactive material. Um, this is probably a prime example of why. Uh, well, you don't go around licking rocks now. Mostly make fun of the whole uh, rock licking thing. Obviously, people aren't finding a mysterious fuzzy looking yellow rock and sticking it in their mouth but um you know this is a kind of kind of on the more dangerous end of what most people would probably have i have seen some stuff that are you know getting a cpm of 450,000 uh 500,000 cpm uh very hot stuff has came from northeast washington uh but yeah, you know, it's kind of kind of interesting to, to see something like this. Let's see where this goes. So we're kind of landing around that, you know, 2,800 CPM. Not bad, not bad at all. Well, we got everything all cleaned up now. Everything's packed back away. So I hope I hope you found that to be a little enjoyable to be able to see some different uh, materials maybe you really haven't seen before or you just don't know anything about this. Um, I do plan on hitting up some of our 
many, many abandoned uranium mines this summer. I'm finding some more stuff. Uh, I'll probably be building a, uh, a bigger containment chamber for all my radioactive stuff. As the collection gets a little bit bigger, I'm going to outgrow what I currently have. So that can be a fun video, too. Um, you know, I'm not not an expert in this stuff. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a background in this, um, but you don't really have to have a background in it to know how to uh, safely handle and store some of this stuff. So um, with that said, uh, thanks for coming by. Also, for those of you that are channel members, over on the community tab, uh, I posted uh, some different articles, some different PDFs on the uranium mines that are around Northeast Washington. So definitely go check those out if you're if you're interested in that. Thanks for coming by, everyone. We'll have to catch you in the next video.